Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, we're here for the final video on the MusaShare X7 and we're going to compare it to the Wilson R8. But first I want to just kind of do a quick recap about what we did to this amp. As you probably noticed, much shorter video series on this amp. Most of the stuff we did was for reliability. The amp was sent to me with an issue with the switch not functioning correctly. That switches between the bias and the VU meter function. And I think most of that was due to the amp sitting up and the contacts having a little corrosion in them. I was able to exercise the switch just kind of back and forth half a dozen times and things started working. And I probably could have sprayed some deox in it and been good to go. But the guy paid a lot of money to have it shipped here. I had a discussion with him and he said, let's go ahead and put some silver plated contact switches to replace these. Found some on Mauser. They had them in stock and it was fairly easy to swap that out. He also didn't like that these bias adjusters were sunk down in the holes, which I don't either. And even though these do have the safety resistors to keep the apatus from going into nuclear red plate meltdown, which the R8 doesn't have, we decided to go ahead and put some higher quality bias pots in here while I had the amp. The other thing I noticed was the main caps for the KT88 part of the power supply were only ready for 450 volts, which is basically the amps just bumping right up against that limit. Seems to be a little undersized to me, so step up to 500 or 550 volts, whichever one you can find. And I'm pretty sure we put 550 in here. It's been so long. But anyway, swapped out those caps. And the only other thing we did was we removed the headphone jack wiring and wired the output transformers directly to the speaker jacks. Same thing we did on the R8. So the differences between these two amps as far as the build quality. The R8, I had to replace every resistor inside it because they were clearly substandard cracking falling apart coatings definitely just seemed like very cheap parts replaced all the coupling caps because they looked just cheap to me too while we were in there but other people have said that changing the coupling caps made a huge difference which i'm not shocked the grounding scheme in r8 was horrible they had multiple ground points all over the place. When I was initially testing the amp, I was picking up radio stations and all kinds of weirdness that was related to the grounding scheme that the amp was built with. And so we had to repair all of that stuff. Just honestly, most of the wiring inside the amp was just done in a really haphazard, non-standard way that obviously was not ideal. This amp, on the other hand, really didn't do anything that would have changed the sonic performance other than maybe the headphone jack wiring. And I'm not even sure that's going to be like a huge change. The grounding in this amp was done in a star ground pattern, working off the first cap in the power supply, which is ideal. The other really cool thing they did in this amp was the power supply for the KT88s is solid state. It's got a couple of diodes or a bridge rectifier, and then it's got some big caps that provide a really beefy power supply for the power tubes. And then the rectifier tube supplies the front end and keeps it separated from the power supply that's supplying the output tubes, which is a pretty cool way of doing things. It has much nicer coupling caps inside. The wiring's much cleaner. The components are all nice. The resistors were good. I mean, really, if it hadn't had this issue sitting up with this switch, the guy probably would still be listening to it. And like I said, he'd spent, you know, probably 250 bucks to ship it to me and back, 
we decided to replace the caps and stuff just preemptively. So between the two amps, if you bought both of them, and they're right at the same price point, the R8 needs to have basically the inside gutted and rewired to be done in a standard, you know, industry standard kind of way to fix all the ground loop problems and nonsense that it has. And this amp doesn't need anything. The other thing that I really like about this amp is it lets you pick triode and ultralinear and it just stays there. Most people are going to either like triode or ultralinear and they're not going to be just randomly switching back and forth and to me it's kind of silly on the R8 that when you power it up it defaults to triode mode every time and you have to switch it to ultralinear if you're an ultralinear person, which I am. The other thing is it's got the source deal where it, you know, steps through the different sources, but it defaults to the first one. And so you have to basically hook whatever you're going to listen to most often to the first one because that's what it defaults to. And on this one, you can just set it to whatever you're going to listen to most often right here with this knob. The other thing is the input sensitivity on this one doesn't seem quite as hot and also the volume control is more linear like on the R8 you just touch the volume knob and it's blowing you out of the room and then it's just hyper sensitive and the volume control remote is almost useless. You give it one little bump and it's blasting and then you give it one little bump and it's too quiet where this one seems a lot more linear. The other thing I like much better is the way they do the bias adjuster and that it's got a meter for both channels and it actually shows you the milliamps that it's set to unlike the R8 that's just got like a center position and you're going. The other thing that I saw on this amp that they say that it's not really set up to run EL34 tubes, I see no reason you can't run the lower power EL34 tubes and just adjust the bias to fit that tube's wattage profile. But haven't tried it myself, didn't see any reason to because I really found a sweet set of tubes that works in this amp. Out of the box, the MusiShare tubes this amp came with, not a big fan of. The KT88s it came with are mismatched, which was kind of disappointing when you're spending this much money to send a mismatched set of tubes to an amp which clearly affected the distortion profile is not ideal at all and it even says in the manual that comes with it you should get a matched set of tubes yet they don't supply a matched set of tubes with the amp so went with these Shugi KT88-Zs they're still available here and there in random places I'll send a link below to Yoda Electronics that still has quads of these and a match sets. In this amp, these twos rock. We tried some Gold Lion KT88s as well, and they were close. So if you had a set of Gold Lion tubes, you know, it's not like they're going to sound bad, but these definitely had a little bit of an edge over the Gold Lions in this amp with the set of front end tubes that we ended up using. So on the front end tubes, good news is you don't need to go out and find some crazy, you know, new old stock, 50 year old RCA's black plate with a double holes or any kind of nonsense like that. You can just go to the tube store, get Gold Lion 12AX7 for this center tube. Just new production, Nothing fancy, just your plain old Gold Lion 12AX7. For the 12AU7s, now this is important, get these gold pin, and they come in a gold box like this, 12AU7 from Electro Harmonics. And they're about, you know, almost twice what the black box ones are. Do not get the black box ones. They do not sound the same. These gold ones sound really good. And last night, in about a six-hour tube rolling session, we tried 
about a dozen different tubes in this amp and there is definitely some magic going on between these gold lions these gold electro harmonics and these KT88-Z tubes and I'll get into that in a minute we tried some new old stock you know high end kind of you know stuff in these you know front tubes and these new productions sounded better I mean these tubes really work well together and the rectifier tube it comes with sounds fine so don't waste your money spending money on that I do want to make a retraction of some statements that I made previously at least as it applies to this amp but also on the R8 when I was saying that the phase splitter tubes don't make as much difference as this you know voltage amplification tube they do I was kind of shocked that they made as much difference as they do so don't discount the phase splitter tubes when you're tube rolling I know a lot of people have said that yeah the phase splitters don't contribute much you know focus on this tube it's just not the case obviously this is an important tube to have right but these phase splitters matter too and like I said these gold pin electro harmonics really sounded great with this gold lion 12x7 and these KT88-Zs so if you got one of these amps roll these tubes in it none of the mods that I did in this video are going to impact the sonic signature of this amplifier and I really like the way this whole circuit's designed in this amp. It may look similar to an R8, but it's just not. And now let's get into the sound of this versus the R8. And this hands down just sounds better. It's got a cleaner sound. It's crisper. The details aren't smeared. It's just it is smoother it's definitely not fatiguing it's got a nice sparkle on the top end without being just like over the top or in your face it's got a great sound stage it's got a lot of depth to it it just it's just a superior product and they're basically the same price point and I know this is gonna upset a lot of R8 folks and I'm sure there's a lot of R8 owners that are going to somehow feel their personal self-worth is tied to their purchase decisions and are going to, you know, get all upset. But I'm just, I'm going to tell it like it is, guys. Go buy one of these. If you're on the fence about which one of these to get, this X7 is just a far superior product. The way it's designed, the way it's constructed, the parts that are used. Like, I didn't change the coupling caps. I just used the ones that were in it because they really looked, they were nice, big, fat-looking ones that looked like they could get the job done. And also, I'm not hearing anybody talking about these things like red plating and blowing up tubes and having to swap out boards in them or doing anything like that. And like I said, the one fault that this thing was sent to me for was... I believe from it sitting up, not sure how it was stored, whether it was maybe in a humid place, maybe not, I don't know, but it was just corrosion on this little switch because he said the amp was playing fine and he just decided to check the bias and then when he flipped the switch, the bias was going crazy, you know, the meter was going crazy and, and then he started screwing with the adjusters trying to get the meter right and then it was like, oh, I better shut this thing off and he could have you know, cause some issues if he had, you know, turned the bias all the way hot and just left it there because the meter was weird and he didn't understand what was going on. So I'm glad he sent it to me before that happened. And that reminds me of the one thing I did change in this amp is the resistor on the cathode of the output tubes. I think it had a 5-watt one, which is ridiculous. Put a 1-watt one in it so if something ever does happen, tube's red plate it'll pop that resistor before it does any damage to the inside of the amp but the good news is it does have the safety resistors on the bias pots so that if the wiper on the bias pot fails the tubes aren't going to red plate so that may be why they felt safe doing that so anyway 
there it is. This thing's done. Oh, one last thing. We did test the photo stage that comes in this because that's one thing this has that the R8 doesn't is it's got a little small photo stage board up in the front. And it's pretty bad. I mean, I guess it does work. And if you had no other option, you could hook a turntable up to this. But I would not call it a hi-fi solution to listen to vinyl. So if your goal is to listen to vinyl, just assume that you're going to have to buy some sort of external photo stage. You guys know I love that EAR-834 clone type solution, but even some of the higher end solid state external photo stages sound good. You're going to have to buy a photo stage or have a turntable that has one built in that's good. And I haven't listened to those to see if they're good or not, so not going to weigh in on that, but I can say the phono stage in this sounds real thin. It doesn't have any bass. It's not noisy, but it just doesn't sound good. So don't count on this being a permanent solution. Now, if you just randomly are going to listen to vinyl and you have some old turntable and, you know, the vinyl you got is pretty crappy and you just kind of for nostalgia wanted to listen to it, it's got the functionality and it does work. So just wanted to throw that in there that, that's probably one of the weak points in this is the photo stage in it really is nowhere near as good as the rest of this amplifier is, which is kind of a shame that they didn't step up and put a really nice photo stage because that would have taken it way over the top of what it is. So if you're looking for a $1,500 price point, 40, 45 watt-ish push-pull KT88 style amp, this is the one you want. Don't buy the R8. And honestly, I can't recommend buying the R8 to anyone after having worked on both. Now, if you already own the R8, you know, doing the mods I did to it, I can understand that. But you're still stuck with an amp. And I don't know whether it's the output transformers. You know, some people are saying, oh, well, maybe it's the tubes and you should have tested it with these tubes and that amp and bought a bunch of tube adapters. And it's like, at some point, it's like, what's left of the original R8 to make it sound as good as this one out of the box? So there we go. Wrap up video. Hope you all have enjoyed the series and the comparison between these two popular amplifiers. I really think this is, again, the winner. Hope you're enjoying my content. If you are, please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video. And until the next time, have a nice day.